relief taking medications. No history of joint, tingling sensation and numbness over the extremities, nasal stuffiness and bleeding, deviation of the angle of the mouth, slipping of footwear. There was no history of cough with expectoration, loss of appetite, weight loss and pain after pain. Treatment history, history of application of native medication. Past, there is no fuller complaints in the past, no history of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, tuberculosis, asthma or anything. Family history, she's a uh, uh, married life of uh, 20 years, non consanguineous There is no history of diabetes, hypertension, asthma and drug abuse. Socioeconomic history, patient lives in a culture house, labourer by occupation and earning about 200 per day. She belongs to a lower socioeconomic strata. Her personal history, diet is mixed, appetite is good, sleep is sound and her bowel and bladder movements are regular. Habits, she is a beetle and chewer, chewer since past 10 years. Menstrual and gynecological history, her menstrual cycles are regular with moderate flow, there is no dysmenorrhea and she was tuberculosis 15 years back. General physical examination. Here is a middle aged female patient conscious of well oriented to time, place and person. Ala interest, cyanosis, dumping, lymphoid, and edema were absent. Her birth rate was 62 beats per minute. Respiratory rate was 14 cycles per minute. Red pill, 56 bar 80 mm of Hg. Temperature was 800. Coming to head to toe examination. Yes, cerebral ring were present, normal injection and distribution. Nails, non bronish general bridging was present. Whole cavity was well hydrated and there was training of 3% with poor oral hygiene. Genital and neural inner mucosa was normal. There was budget and body content never seen. Coming to cutaneous examination, head to toe, that is uh, from head and neck. Well defined head and water block, measuring about 6 into 5 centimeters on the left cheek and 4 into 3 centimeters on the right cheek, involving the nasolabial fold. These were soft in consistency. With smooth surface, on dioscopy, apertural and nodules were absent. There were also well defined edematous block over the nasal bridge, which was soft in consistency with a smooth surface. Multiple edematous papules were present over the upper eyelid. This is a clinical picture. This is a clinical picture of a patient with, uh, you can see here, well defined edematous block with uh, smooth surface, and there was white skin present, and it was soft in consistency. And uh, this is a this is also a similar lesion where it was well defined with uh, ed with the edema present and uh, and white scaling present over the lesion. This is a similar lesion on the left side of the cheek. In this picture, we can clearly see the scaling and infiltration on the upper eyelid with, uh, with multiple papules over the upper eyelid, which are skin colored. Over the upper limb, solitary well defined hypopigmented patch measuring about 5 to 3 cm was present over the right forearm, while spaceness of air was present over the tedia. This is a hypopigmented patch with mild spaces of air and uh, sensation over this uh, region was long. Solitary well defined block measuring about 3 to 4 cm was present over the lower back. Sensory examination. Sensations over the lesions were intact. Sensations over the extremities and other areas were intact. Coming to motor examination, operating the upper limb and lower limb was found to be normal, that is by the way. Just to our patient of analysis. Coming to peripheral nerve examination, there was no uh, enlarged and tender nerves in the peripheral nerves. Coming to examination of the husband revealed multiple skin colored capsules over the pinna. Infiltration was present over the forehead. These are the multiple skin colored papules present over the pinna of the husband. And this is the infiltration seen over the upper uh, eyebrows in the husband. Coming to the relevant investigations, one foot test was done and it was native. Slit skin smear examination was done and it was native for ARP. Chest x rays was within normal limits. ENT and ophthalmology findings were within normal limits. Skin biopsy from the lesion was sent from the face and the back for histopathological examination. Can they help them? I would, I would uh, ask you. Can you see the lesion of the
So granulomas, again, compact aggregates of histiocytes, causes for the infection, physical agent, inflammatory. This I already told you, what is an epithelioid cell. Next. Just look at this and look at this. We just got some knowledge in the previous two slides. Look at this granuloma and look at what it contains. Look at these granulomas and what do they contain? Is there a difference between the two granulomas? Yes? No? You know, you're not sleeping, right? Then, what does this granuloma contain? Plenty of lymphocytes, dense lymphocytic infiltration, whereas here, very, very minimal. So, what do we call this as? Tuberculoid granuloma. This is sarcoid granuloma. This is a naked granuloma. This has a lot of lymphocytes. Why I am showing you all this is you have to go, you, you, when I show you the signs of this patient, you have to identify what type of granuloma it is. Next. Okay, this is not a clear cut picture. If I were to say it is JPEG, I would have just zoomed and shown you. Uh, this is again a granuloma. I think maybe you can make out that there is dense lymphocytic infiltration, that blue color. But this granuloma, there is one here. There's one granuloma here, two, three. They're very friendly. What does it mean? They're confluent, they just fused together. And in the center, we can just make out an acellular zone. So that is the zone of necrosis. This, this was a nice picture on the laptop. I don't know here. It's lost it. It's okay, that's uh, okay. Just go to the next. Yeah. So epithelial granulomas and sarcoid granulomas. Let us just quickly go through. If we see epithelial granulomas, sorry, tuberculoid granulomas causes a tuberculosis, leprosy, then atypical mycobacterial infection. Then all these granulomas, swimming pool, then leishmaniasis, lupus miliaris, syphilis, rosacea, leprosy, and all this. Whereas if you are just looking at a granuloma which is naked, subcoidal granuloma, causes a subcoidal silica, then beryllium and all that, lichen and titus and cutaneous Crohn's disease. Which is divided, classified granulomas only as tuberculoid, subcoidal. So if you see tuberculoid, we think of all this as a differential diagnosis. If it is a subcoidal granuloma, we just switch to transfer to those uh, causes next. Yeah, that is a granuloma, granuloma and there is one. Then, uh, okay, necrobiosis, lipotica, rheumatoid nodule is another one there. We see very nice palisadic uh, uh, granuloma that is in the center, you see fibrinoid necrosis where the histiocyte is palisade, then at the periphery palisade. Next, foreign body type of granulomas, it could be anything. It's most common in the skin, what we see. Even in the, if it's an epidermoid cyst or if it ruptures, the keratin which is there is liberated and it gives rise to foreign body Janssen reaction. As long as the keratin is within the cell, it is harmless. If it just comes out, it is recognized as a foreign substance and there is granulomatous inflammatory reaction. Type 2, yeah. Yeah, next. So, spectrum of mycobacterial infections. Uh, cutaneous tuberculosis, atypical mycobacteria, swimming pool, uh, granuloma and leprosy. Next. Uh, just look at this. It's a well-defined granuloma from this patient. So it's a tuberculoid granuloma. What can you make up here? This picture has only the basal layer of the epidermis. So these are the granulomas with plenty of chances. Where are they located? This is the epidermis. Where is the granuloma? Is it in the subcutaneous tissue? No, it is in the dermis. Which dermis? Papillary. It is upper dermis. It's so closely related to the epidermis here. Next. Yeah, lupus vulgaris. I just read out the clinical, uh, the microscopic features. The thinning of the epidermis. That's one feature. But when this granuloma goes and abuts the epidermis, there could be ulceration. With ulceration, there is a reparative process that happens. Then the epithelium could be hyperplastic. There could be pseudo epitheliomatous hyperplasia. Though normally we say there is thinning of the epidermis. Then we say tuberculoid granulomas. Now you have a concept of what is a tuberculoid granuloma? Yes. Tuberculoid granulomas composed of epithelioid cells and lymphocytes which are coughing 
uh, they are present in the upper half of the dermis, upper half of the dermis impinging on the epidermis. Remember that picture I showed you in the previous slide. Then fine stain, yeah, this is impinging on the epidermis. Next. So generally, AFP stain may not really or identify the acid fast well. But what happens later? There is fibrosis. There could be telangiectasia in older lesions. So subcutaneous tissue, granulomas are very rare. Subcutaneous tissue, because we said the granulomas, granulomas are restricted to the upper dermis. Yes. So if at all if you see such a lesion, we think of babies as leishmaniasis. Here at least in our state we don't think of leishmaniasis unless we get a history that patient is from a place where leishmaniasis is there. We do see the organisms. We see the organisms, the antibodies, then we make a diagnosis of leishmaniasis. Tuberculoid leprosy is a differential diagnosis. It infiltrates are centered around the neurovascular bundles. Very important feature. Sometimes culture may be required. It may assist in identifying the type of bacillus. Tertiary syphilis, anywhere if we are making a diagnosis of syphilis in the tissue or on tissue biopsy, two features are very important. What are the two important features of uh, syphilis? Pathology pages can tell me. What's the type of inflammatory infiltrate? Plasma cell, pedivascular, very good. Pedivascular, cuffing by plasma cells. Second is, what happens to the arteries and the uh, and arthritis of the trends. Two features, a lot of glass muscles should be seen. Then sarcoidosis, though I said it's a tuberculoid <laughs> granule, we should never bring in sarcoidosis because there is no lymphocytic response. Next. Yeah. Atypical mycobacterial infection. Now here we see an additional feature that may not be well defined granulomas, but we see a mixture of infiltrates consisting of neutrophils, lymphocytes, and histiocytes. Sometimes a neutrophil can infiltrate with necrosis predominates. And when we do a special stay, uh, usually we pick up the bacteria, which are atypical, which, which are larger, which are darkly staining. Next. A tuberculosis varicosa cutis is one. Can we think of tuberculosis varicosa cutis in this patient you presented? Do you think of it my clinically? No. No. The lesions are different. No, it's, it's mainly <coughs> epidural. See, what we see is hyperkeratosis, then hyperplasia or acanthosis, papillomatosis. Very important feature in the epidermis. Spongiosis, exocytosis, they may be present and the abscess formation. You know, aggregates of neutrophils could be seen and occasional epithelial granulomas are present. If it's a superficial biopsy, we miss. That's why we ask for a deeper biopsy. They could be present and fibrosis and the really acid cause bacilli may be appreciated. See here you see marked hyperkeratosis. Parakeratosis, okay, high fire, you know what I'm saying here. Slightly irregular epidermal hyperplasia. The epidermis is coming in here, till here. You can make count. And uh, tuberculoid granular <coughs> papillary dermal. Can you make out the lighter zone here? One, two, then the epidermis of histiocytes or epithelial cells. Next. Tuberculoid leprosy. Just taken uh, only tuberculoid leprosy because talking about the granuloma. So this is seen in patients strong host resistance. Go to the next. So important features, if it is tuberculoid leprosy, we may not see the Gren zone. Where do we see Gren zone? Lepromatous leprosy. No? Because of aggregates of histiocytes or lepra cells in the dermis which push the collagen. Uh, then there are well formed and elongated tuberculoid or sarcoidal granuloma. So we'll take it as tuberculoid granulomas. Well formed tuberculoid granulomas. But where are they present? There is no necrosis or caseation. They are present around the neurovascular bundles. Erected pili muscle, very, very important. We have to look for this muscle if this is involved. We favor leprosy, diagnosis of leprosy. Then bacilli, really identified on the 5 faraco. And then sometimes, uh, maybe, remnants of no virus, you can say, but non caseated granulomas. There could be Langhans giant cells. And this is present throughout the dermis. Neurovascular bundles no, and adenics are. Where are the adenics are present? We say typical granulomas are inflammatory infiltrate in is around 
neurovascular violence and around the adrenal cell. Then the adrenal cell present. Then the epidermis. Then the epidermis. Then what is the superficial? Yes. So these are the features with this. Uh, let us just. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, one more is we to look at the shape of the granuloma. If you remember how the neurovascular bundles appear in histology sections of the skin or how the skin, the nerve bundle is cut across. So in leprosy, the nerve is totally replaced by the granuloma. So granuloma also takes that shape, right? It becomes oblong in shape, oblong granulomas. And uh, I showed you one picture which was not good. I said the granulomas are friendly, they are confluent. So but here they are discrete then we do not find confluent granulomas. Granulomas are discrete. So this is about the basic uh, knowledge that uh, I have given you. Though granulomas are classified in different bases, caseating, non-caseating, yeah, let us take that. Caseating, non-caseating. But here it is tuberculoid and sarcoidal granulomas. Let us just see the biopsy, microscopic features of uh, the biopsy which we have done. There is no PPT, they just repeat uh, pictures. Two folders, one is the face and the other is same folder, same file. This is down, down. No. Same, same what you have. Does this come down? No, no. This one. Let's open it. Yeah, back. Uh, yeah, just, just think of the face, face. the biopsy from the face. Okay. This is the epidermis. You can see how, how what is a biopsy? What type of biopsy was it which was done? It took a wedge biopsy, I think. Huh? So it has uh, the tissue till subcutaneous. Excellent. And we see from epidermis till the subcutaneous and the chunk was also bigger when I saw it on the slide. So appreciate the epidermis now. How is the epidermis? Yeah, just come down. Little down. Good. Hey, look at the epidermis. Comment on the epidermis. At least tell me whether there's a kyptosis. Is it normal? Is it atrophic? Looks atrophic. Agree? What is the criteria to say that epidermis is atrophic? We say five layers, less than five layers is atrophy. <laughs> yes, epidermis is atrophy. Next. Just a low power again, go back. Don't zoom. Yeah. Now tell me where is the lesion? Is it an epidermal lesion? Yeah. Lesion is confined to the dermis. Okay. Now tell me which part of the dermis? Which part of the dermis? Is it? The upper dermis, the papillary, is the mid dermis or is it the subcutaneous tissue? Yeah? Mid dermis, just mid dermis? Through and through. See, so you can see the lesion from the epidermis. It's very close to the epidermis here. From here till the subcutaneous. Can you just go, uh, Sujan? Slightly higher. So from here till Whatever biopsy you have done, it's entirely <coughs> involved. So involved by what? What we can make out is there's some nodular aggregates. This is what we say nodular infiltrate. This is with nodular infiltrates. So this is subcutaneous tissue. Even in the subcutaneous tissue, you can see this nodular aggregates. Next. But this picture is not uh, clear. Yeah. This is slightly better. Uh, Uh, can you just zoom this? Okay. Can you make out dark and light areas? Dark and light? This is light, surrounding is dark. Yes? 
slightly zoom or go to the next what is, what is this dark area debate these are all lymphocytes these are all lymphocytes okay now what is it that you are going to tell me these lighter areas are all aggregates of epithelioid cells dark is a dense lymphocytic infiltrate so what granuloma is this tuberculoid granuloma are we ruling out sarcoid yes so the third differential is ruled out if we do not go into the third differential so this is an epithelial uh, tuberculoid granuloma so if it's a tuberculoid granuloma what we need to differentiate now two things we have in mind is it tuberculoid leprosy or is it lupus vulgaris yes next actually where uh, these granulomas are concentrated yes see here that this granuloma is in the upper dermis also very closely related to the epidermis and uh, what are these what are these this is sebaceous glands these are the yeah so can you appreciate the sebaceous uh, unit so this is a pilo sebaceous unit so the granuloma is concentrated around this you can see one here this come this side this one this this one excellent you can can you make out the adenoxyl structures this these granulomas have a predilection for adenoxyl structures they have the affinity for adenoxyl what do you see here in between this is erective pyloric muscle this is erective pyloric no no it's not no but no one is will have very baby uh, yeah nucleus see see look at this this is a granuloma this is uh, uh, the lighter area aggregate of epithelial cells so you can make out a giant cell here this is another granuloma this is another gran granuloma the one two this is a very tiny granuloma there is one are they all friendly are they confluent no they are not confluent they are pure discrete they are discrete granulomas next next picture yeah just can you zoom this Look at this granuloma and tell me the shape of this granuloma. This one, round, circular, <laughs> oval, oblong. Now this is what I I told you oblong granulomas. See how it? This is along the. This is replace the nerve bundle which usually gets cut across like that. So replacement of the nerve bundle. It's taken that shape. It's an oblong granuloma. There's another very well defined granuloma here. Another granuloma. Another granuloma. So they are all discrete. So two things which are very very uh, clear to us here: tuberculoid granulomas, then lymphocytic infiltrate. But these granulomas are centered, or they're showing affinity for neurovascular bundles and adenoxyl. They're all oblong in nature. They're discrete. discrete granulomas next yeah look at this granuloma what can you make out here there is a giant cell this granuloma is a giant cell so this giant cell is also of like hans type we say like hans type of giant cell the nuclei could be arranged in horseshoe manner only on one side c shape or it could be on either side c here c here or it could be circular this is a very well defined giant cell that we are able to see and is there any necrosis in the center of the granulomas necrosis is not a criteria here even if you pass well guys we may not see necrosis and necrosis could be very minimal so this is a non caseated granuloma with dense lymphocytes surrounding it next this was that uh, what we saw um, this is erected pyloric muscle and the granuloma is concentrated around the adenoxyl neurovascular bundle next this is around the adenoxyl next one this is neurovascular when i said look at the vessel then they all will be together <laughs> this is only to show you uh, show a black vessel and uh, the paler staining cells are all uh, histiocytic epithelial cells next 
So again discrete granulomas. So this nodular aggregate has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, probably 6 granulomas. They are all separate. This, this is a blood vessel. It's not a granuloma. This is a blood vessel. We know the affinity for that. It's not occupying uh, the entire tissue. They are concentrated around the appendages. Next. Yeah, this is the uh, same thing. Hyper. Next. Next, uh, this is again to show uh, the subcutaneous tissue which is involved. Next, nodular aggregates, uh, it, it's a granulomatous inflammatory. This is look at the blood vessels now. Yes, and uh, what do we do next with this? We definitely do an AFB stain. So, sudden stain, no. If it's for leprobacillae and uh, tubercle bacillae, yes, you know, there is slightly a different procedure. For uh, leprobacillae, we do uh, fine ferropostin, modified weight fine ferropostin. What is the modification? Because the tissue is processed, the cell, the bacillae would have lost their acid fastness. So, we regain the acid fastness of uh, the bacteria by treating the sections with peanut oil. You know, we treat the sections before we go on to do a fight for state. The sections are treated with either uh, coconut oil or uh, even uh, you know, the groundnut oil. So then we proceed further with the staining. And maybe I am sure this would have been a difficult case to retrieve the bacteria because it is such good uh, host immune response we are seeing here. You no know, granulomas and dense lymphocytic infiltrate. Next. I just wanted my nucleus to be shown uh, there, epithelial cell. Look, look at this nuclear, elongated footprint, I said. Uh, yeah, maybe it's like you, you can appreciate. Now the elongated nucleus, footprint is one end, it is wider, it is uh, slightly narrower. Yeah. You know, the aggregates, we can appreciate the uh, Nucleus of the epithelial cell, I told you they have they also have like uh, cytoplasm and ill defined cell border. That's why you cannot exactly put a boundary for the outline of the cell and say this is a particular cell. They all have used cytoplasm there. Yeah, next. So these are the lymphocytes. Hyper uh, is very clear to show this lymphocytes with, uh, with round, slightly darker nucleus, very dense lymphocytic infiltrate. Next. Can you know to lupus vulgaris now? We have two DDs here, lupus vulgaris and uh, tuberculoid leprosy. So which one? Depending on all the features, we consider all the microscopic features which we saw. What is the diagnosis? Lupus? Lupus vulgaris? No? Why? Why not lupus vulgaris? We have two diagnoses now. Why not lupus vulgaris? We said lupus vulgaris, the granulomas are confined to upper dermis and mid dermis. They are just confined to upper and mid dermis. So here we say, we say neurovascular bundles and adenoids are very well. Next is that you can see the granulomas there. So that is one feature and discrete granulomas. Discrete granulomas. So shall we take up this uh, tuberculosis leprosy as number one? The first diagnosis. And should we still keep lupus vulgaris? Should we still keep lupus vulgaris as the DD after seeing the microscopy? No, we may say investigate for tuberculosis because the clinical diagnosis offered is one of the clinical diagnosis DD offered is lupus vulgaris. Let us see. Now this patient has another lesion. Next. So what we saw is from the face. Next one. So just the next one, next folder. Yeah, lesion from the back or I don't know where was that uh, the biopsy was from? Second biopsy is hands, sir. Back. 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 Yeah. Yes. So this is uh, yeah. Look at this. What has happened to the epidermis? Atrophic. Why do you say it's atrophic? Not just the number of layers of cells in the epidermis. No retail. You make out the retail. It is not though so much obvious, it is becoming flat. Then what do you see? Slightly higher. 
and mixing in slightly higher up. Just go there. Sebaceous, highly sebaceous unit. Yes. Then again, you see nodular infiltrate. Nodular infiltrate. So, what type of, again, it's a granulomatous lesion. Look at this granuloma. Pale area is epithelial cells and it's got a dense array of lymphocytes. We have a tuberculoid granuloma. Even this is not showing any features of sarcoid granuloma. Next. All these. So this is again at the next day. You see the infiltrate. This is again a pyrosebaceous unit. So it's, the granuloma is totally confined to this region. Next. So again, uh, see these are almost like uh, uh, destroyed uh, uh, adenexal structures. Uh, so this is the granuloma, epithelial cells, and one bundle you know, looks like uh, the uh, erective pyloral muscle which is there. That's also infiltrated. Next, next. Yeah. So look at this. This is again uh, the erective pyloral muscle. This is the one that strongly tells us it is tuberculosis, it is tuberculoid leprosy. Look at the smooth muscle fibers, they are infiltrated, they are infiltrated by the lymphocytes. And the granuloma is around this, this is a hair follicle, you can make out the hair follicle, then the dense lymphocytic infiltrate. Next. So look at the granulomas here, what has happened? The granulomas are confined to the upper Germans and the mid germans So we are not seeing granulomas beyond. But the granulomas which are seen are discrete. The discrete. That is exactly like what granulomas we saw in the previous biopsy or the lesion from the face. Next. Yeah, this is all uh, to show how uh, they are related to the adenexin. They are concentrated around the adenexin. There is some doubt whether they are becoming confluent here, but still they are discrete. This is only by oxidation. Probably we thought, are they confluent? No, when you, when you just zoom and see, they are definitely uh, discrete here. Next. Yeah. See the entire graph biopsy picture from the superficial, from the epidermis till the lower end, we we'll see nodular infiltrates of epithelioid cells and lymphocytes. No special stain, the uh, special stain was done, I think, for this also. There no bacilli that were either, that was identified. Any more pictures? That's it. The next. Next. We see the same, same, same. So that's about uh, the microscopic pictures. Now you had knowledge about uh, the granulomas and with this appearance, what do you want to uh, diagnose this lesion as? Doubtful, still doubtful. We are into a CPC. Still doubtful. Are you not confident? You say, yes, it's tuberculosis. Let me like go and treat the patient with uh, uh, the required you know, uh, leprosy treatment. Put the patient on leprosy treatment. No? Yes? Why is still the doubt of this? So now, if because we have taken this as uh, for CPC, I would have just written it as tuberculosis leprosy only. There is that doubt. Why did this doubt you know, arise? So now we have to do something else to doubly confirm or say it is this. Only feature that you are seeing here that is overlapping, probably the second biopsy is the granulomas confined only to the upper dermis and the mid dermis, where doubtfully there was that uh, confluence of the granulomas. So, what could be done next? So, I caught hold of Jaisima, Jaisima is bitter. So, we we'll just slightly proceed further and make sure because there are so many case reports which say that uh, in an individual, both the lesions are existing. So, one lesion is lupus vulgaris and the other is uh, tuberculoid leprosy. You know, this was uh, the reports which we were, me and uh, Kavita were reading. You know, patient with uh, uh, tuberculosis, I think, getting uh, leprosy, right? Not leprosy patient with tuberculosis, it's reactivation tuberculosis, which can occur because all of us are exposed to this uh, tubercle bacilli. This is only 
again to confirm so that uh, this could be a nice case before which Dr. Murugesh can, uh, you know, go publish it. So this is over to Dr. Jaisima. He will just give us uh, uh, further, like, how we manage, we take the help of uh, uh, microbiologists now, though with histopathology we have come to a conclusion. I think, uh, uh, so that that's all and uh, we would 100% say it is what? The only is only the lupus vulgaris. Yes. Thank you, madam. Uh, <clears throat> is probably the other diagnosis that you can think of. Can you do an analysis? Can you do a serological issue to tell I think in the, one of the slides, I think I was seeing it one day, in the tertiary syphilis, I think very much the serological test could be done. It's for the tertiary syphilis slide. Whether you can do a serological test for a tertiary syphilis. So, the test is better for this tertiary surface or the second surface? Second is the best for saying that. Okay, now coming to this case. See, most of uh, the skin lesions, okay, no, most of the skin lesions, the role of, I think the one test you can have in your mind is the PCR, right? You know about PCR? Anybody? Is the PCR test done in the army or? Yes, it's done in the army. There is. In our, in, yeah, in our uh, SS Institute, it is done for about one or three important diseases. One is uh, for the tuberculosis, another one is for dengue, and another one is uh, human papillomavirus. These are the three important viruses which we are uh, uh, looking with a uh, PCR. Now, coming to this case, most of the skin lesions, the role of PCR is very, very minimal. That is the most important thing you have to suggest. The most appropriate diagnostic tool which is there to diagnose whether it is a tuberculosis leprosy or whether it is a uh, lupus is the skin biopsy. You have to do a skin biopsy, then you have to talk with the histopathologist, look for the most, pro most probable carrying of mind, then you have to present. Yes, you have that stingy doubt whether to take up that PCI is there or not, then check up for the immunity of the patient. In most of the cases, the immunity of the person is somewhat moderate to somewhat hilla immunity with some skin lesions and if your histopathological lesion suggests that there is a probably AFB is there, then you can go for a PCR. Otherwise, the chance of the chance of going to the PCR with this type of cases, uh, the chances of the false positive is uh, very, very common. So uh, that's how you have to proceed. So you can do a PCR for this. You can do a PCR for this. See whether there is any chance of uh, uh, the, uh, the nuclear material of uh, the tuberculosis bacilli is there or not, or AF bacilli is there or not, and then I think you have to process. Otherwise, it's a, it's a very, very difficult method because it has been proved beyond all. For the most of the skin of the cutaneous lesions, the role of PCR is very, very minimal. You can do a PCR only if you have a clear cut diameter pathological AFB positivity is there after doing the feed for the first time. Plus, plus, you can do a PCR so, so only to improve the sensitivity of your diagnosis. Otherwise, the problem with the, these type of cases and the role of PCR is a bit questionable still. Thank you. I think you can proceed by itself. You can go for a PCR and then, uh, especially for uh, the publication of the history. I think that, 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 that is very essential uh, that uh, we have to go through the publication. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jason. But this is what uh, we were just thinking. Uh, with our uh, tuberculin test, that is done. You said it's done. Mantra was negative. Mantra was negative. Second, uh, we said PCR. And uh, let us try it out. So let us take a biopsy and not uh, blood PCR. Let us do a biopsy. We'll take a biopsy and do a PCR. And and we presented a similar case, uh, I think, uh, two years back. That was TBC with the bottom of required in uh, Indian Journal of uh, Leprosy. TBC? Uh, bottom of required leprosy. In the check. It was published. Uh, it was published. I think uh, we have one month, uh, since one month she is on MDTF, isn't it? How much time does it require? Already within 15 days, all the adamant yes. order suppressed, I think. She was in reaction, they are suppressed. She is responding. As it will, we go for PCR next. It's only PCR. 
thanks for your uh, presence. You are we even at the five o'clock. You're all here uh, uh, to learn. And that's uh, the best academic uh, response we have got from all of you. Thank you. I, I thank Dr. Murugesh for having given me this opportunity to be here with all of you, and Dr. Vishwanath and Dr. Sugarani to be here again with. Uh, otherwise, the previous classes only me and Dr. Murugesh used to sit till seven o'clock for all the the college classes uh, that we have. And uh, heartfelt thanks to Jai Sima. I think it's not well that she just pulled in. He came here to contribute uh, his micro uh, knowledge about this case, what could be done. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Jai Sima and staff members, Professor Sam's pathology and the pathology PGs. And we'll continue this uh, CPC once in a while, okay? So, uh, I request my colleagues, uh, clinicians, if you get any cases, any cases, yeah. 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 Ye